Is this thing on? Bam, is it focusing? I hope so. Ooh, the light's over there. <laughs> mm. All right. Mm. Oh man, it has just been one of those days. But sometimes you have days that are just one of those. In this video, we're gonna be talking about an air, oh wait, shoot, it's supposed to be a surprise. Hey everybody, welcome to this video. Today, we're gonna be talking about an airplane that I built recently. I call it the V-Bat. So, this airplane um, is called the V-Bat, uh, mainly, as you can probably tell, because of this V-tail on here. And also, it is based on the design of the bat. Now, the bat, this is the bat. This is the uh, kind of uh, pretty close to the original version uh, of the bat. And so I kept the similar, a similar design, but I wanted to try out a few different things. So let's start with the fuselage. So the fuselage is made out of XPS foam. It's one inch thick and it is 15 inches in length. And then I uh, cut it out using a razor blade. So none of it was uh, with a hot wire or anything like that. Probably would have been nicer if I used a hot wire. And I went for a profile fuselage sort of design. All of the electronics and everything are just kind of inside it or just kind of stuck on the stuck stuck on the side of it and I put uh, pops a uh, like a tongue depressor large popsicle stick thing on the bottom of the airplane to protect it uh, give it some structural integrity at that bottom part where the foam is kind of thin and really help it for landings uh, and I put a popsicle stick on the front the tail this is actually just uh, I cut out uh, pretty much the same shape as the regular bat tail but then I just cut two of those and then I glued them in at a 90 degree angle to one, uh, one another. And then I used two servos and mixed them. Technically they are rudder vaders is what they are. So they are, uh, so the, I can mix the controls on my radio so that I can get uh, pitch and uh, yaw or what it kind of ends up being roll. As far as the wing goes, the wing is pretty much the same. I went with the same basic shape. However, I did make a Kind of a continuous spar across the front area and i i pushed it back away from the uh away from the edge away from the leading edge by about half an inch i don't know if it really helps anything but it makes me feel good also with the wing one of the coolest things that i'm really excited about is uh that i added these leds so i have a strip of leds i have green on the right underside of the wing and then red on the left and then on the end caps uh, facing inward i have white LEDs and these things are really bright. Uh, they're like a warm white so they look really nice um, but they are very bright so it's really cool because it, it's like that how uh, aerobatic planes are lit up at night with uh, I think they're called post lights so it shines on the airplane so the whole airplane it looks like it looks like someone's shining a spotlight on it rather than just having your uh, nav lights or your position lights on there. Because I find the position lights are really hard to focus on and kind of maintain orientation um, at night. So I really like that. That's really fun. To power the LEDs, I just connected them with a little pin set here that connects to the balance, uh, balance cable on the battery. Typically, I use an 850 milliamp hour three cell battery. LiPo battery. So for the electronics, the motor, same motor, same, all of the electronics are the same as that I've made for all of my other versions of the BAT. It's, uh, the motor is an Emax MT-1806 2280KV motor. Right now I'm running a 6030 propeller on there. And I have that mounted on just a little uh, bent piece of like aluminum sheet metal. I screwed the motor to the front of that and then um, I just taped the piece of metal to the fuselage and it holds really well holds just fine no problems also notice that i i did set the motor into the fuselage a little bit um, and that's mainly just for uh protection in a crash so that um it's less likely to be the motor sticking out or, or getting getting ripped off it's connected to the motor we have the esc this is a 12 amp emax uh esc a uh, bl heli I've actually had this one for a very long time. This is the original ESC that I got with my very first airplane, the 
flight test tiny trainer and this uh, this little channel here I cut out for the battery so I can have the battery forward if I want um, a little bit more of a nose heavy balance or backward if I want to or aft if I want to do the high alpha kind of stuff this receiver is a Flysky GR3E uh, receiver it's uh, it's it's a three channel receiver so it's it's very puny I guess you could say it's actually made I think for uh, RC cars so nah probably not the most reliable definitely not the most reliable receiver to put on an airplane but since I'm going to be you know this thing is very small and I'm going to be flying it at very uh, short ranges um, I think it works out just fine and I wanted a receiver that was not that large I didn't need a six channel receiver on this airplane going from the receiver to the servos those are their little, the little guys that uh, make our control surfaces control the airplane. So we've got two uh, servos in here. These are like, I think, 4.5 gram Emax servos for the control rods. I just hot, I really, all I did was I took the little metal pieces and I hot glued them to a barbecue skewer and it works really well. The control surfaces are pretty dang huge. Performance wise, uh, it's not quite as good as the bat in terms of control the v-tail design you don't have like full control in the pitch and full control on the yaw because you're kind of you're kind of mixing them uh, mixing and matching uh, to get a, a roll or a pitch up and pitch down and that sort of thing but really if the bat is a 10 for control for the bat because it's the bat and it's the original one so it gets to make up the number then I would say that the V bat is probably a probably an eight or nine. I think uh, I think if you did want to make a version of the bat, this would be a great way of doing it. I think. Um, I mean, even if you just went with uh, with, with a traditional uh, control style with the elevator and rudder as opposed to the V tail. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning and watching the V-Bat. Stay tuned for more. Consider subscribing to this channel if you enjoy this kind of stuff. Also, hey, comment below if, uh, well, any comments that you have about the V-Bat and what you think about it or stuff that you were like, whoa, dude, that's super cool. Or you were like, oh, you could have done this better, but I don't know why you do that because it's perfect as it is. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. It can loop itself pretty well, though. I like it. I'll tell you what, I learned a lot on this build, like a lot, a lot. A lot of really good techniques in here, useful techniques. Oh, oh this thing. Now, depth perception is still going to be a little tricky. This thing is actually incredibly smooth. Oh my gosh. Wow, because it's in the, with the, it's really calmed down a lot and uh, it's really smooth. Well, it's probably not good, but it's cool how they kind of like turn, it looks like they turn off and turn on, like when they're overhead, which is kind of cool. Oh, that was close. I'll take it. I'll take that landing.